Good morning, good morning, y'all. I mean, what is it? Good afternoon? Yes, yeah, good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to give a quick thank you and a shout out to 71 Park. Your video is awesome. Yeah. We just watched some of it, and I encourage everybody else to watch it. And uh, I want to introduce to you exclusively, this is Kristen Parkis, the Tupac number one fan, coming out of Chi-Town. And over here, we got Northside, official outlaw, baby. Second generation. So um, we, coming, we coming live and direct from Jersey. I want to show y'all love. I want to say thank you. I want to thank all my haters. Thank all our haters. Yeah, yeah, for real. Because if you don't have haters, then you're doing something wrong. So God bless you all, even my haters. I want to wish you the very best. I want everybody to stay safe with COVID. And I want to leave you. Yeah, I, I, um, I really enjoyed uh, the presentation, man. You, you did an awesome job of putting this together and getting our brother more exposure for the great work outside of just the pop thing. He's a great human being, and we appreciate uh, the work that you put in to make this uh, production what it is. So shout out to you for all the great work you're doing to give light to someone who is serious about uh, revolution and change in our community. Thank you. It was a great interview. Thank you very much. And thank you for all that you do for Pac. And thank Rich for all he does to keep mm -hmm. Pac's mm -hmm. legacy mm -hmm. alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you. And thank you to our new family right here, North baby. Side for all North he side. Does. He got he got something coming for y'all. Yeah. Oh my god. Oof. And make sure you follow Spark the Brain on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, really? And make sure you go to the Tupac Shakur uh, um, excuse me, the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation yes. org. And it's a mental health um, uh, organization that helps people with mental health. And in many different ways, and we're just trying to spark the brain, right? Okay. Yep. So live and direct, I want to say thank you. You're coming from my home now. God bless you. Thank you. We were once two niggas of the same kind. We can holler at a hoochie with the same line. Everyday life goes, waking up in the morning of Richard Garcia, I always get my cup of coffee. So I always got to get my coffee grind on, all right? Um, usually in the months of September through June, I'm constantly working. So I'm working at the schools at, as a substitute teacher. I work pre-K through 12, so I teach um, all grades, but I stick to the high school because at the high school level, I can actually help in the classrooms. And I'm always working with challenged children, um, people who have anger issues. So I'm always sitting in those type of classes. And the kids relate to me when they see me in the classroom. I walk in with a suit and tie. I never walk around with no bandana on my head. So I separate that from my job at the schools. As far as the, my other job at the supermarket, I am a produce cutter. I cut the fruit and I enjoy cutting the fruit and everybody likes to buy my fruit. All the um, gym heads, all the people that like to be physically fit, they always um, go and they buy my fruit. So I'm constantly working um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for me. I dedicate those days to my job. If I have to do a show or if I have to go to, to a party or somewhat, I try to make things um uh like a schedule you have to schedule me everything's a schedule for me i can't just get up and just you know and and, and do things I'm, I'm always on a schedule on the regular day though you know i always keep my bandana on my head it's something like a it's like a hat for me i don't wear hats i like my bandana um i wear a black bandana most of the time and you know people see me in the street they say hi to me i'm always saying hi um I do wear my mask when I go into buildings. I do wear my mask at all times, you know, to alleviate any type of um, um, stress with any type of other people around me because everybody's under stress due to the COVID-19. My everyday life, well, my days off, I like to play PlayStation 4, 
PSVR. I like to get down like that. I'm also an avid collector. I like X-Men. I like Marvel. I like DC. I was always a comic con type person. Comic books is my thing. And film. I love film. I also have reptiles. A lot of people don't know that about me. I have a black Mexican snake. And that's my baby. She's been with me for about 14, 15 years. And I just bought a, a recently um, a bow constrictor. So I'm into the reptiles heavy. Overall, my type of life is like Tupac. You have to work hard to get a ahead to achieve anything in life you have to work hard and there's always going to be bills so no matter if you're a striving or struggling actor or a rapper dj anything you are anything your heart desires you can do but you got to keep a job at least a part-time job you got to keep the flow coming you got to keep the cash coming in because ain't nobody going to feed you in this world you know what i'm saying so you got to feed yourself if you don't feed yourself you're going to drown and we got to stop relying on other people. We got to do shit and be responsible for our own actions. I believe it was 1993 or 94 when uh, my boy, one of my best friends, and my, my cousin, Chuck, Chuck, chill out. He was cutting my hair. He was like my little personal barber. And I had long hair at the time. I don't think I could grow that anymore. But um, I had long hair at the time. And. He, he always cut my, my sides, and one day he nicked my shit so bad that I got pissed off, and my shit went bald. You know, I was like, just cut it all off. And then as soon as I go outside, people was like, oh, shit, Tupac. I was like, what? They was like, put a bandana on your head. I was like, what are you talking about? They was like, did you see Tupac's video with, um, with, um, with some of the digital undergrounds? And I, I, what was that song? I Get Around? So I was like, let me check it out. And sure enough, that's when the shit just started. You know, I just started looking like Pac and I was messing with all these girls and getting all this attention. I didn't know it was going to last this long. And yes, it got me a lot of attention with the females, you know, back in the day. That's why I got three baby mamas, you know what I'm saying? Led to seven beautiful kids. And now I got three, soon to be three beautiful granddaughters. And I'm very happy and proud. Now that... That is a very good question. That is a very, very good question. One thing I learned uh, when I used to sing in chorus, all right, a lot of motherfuckers don't know this. I, when I went to Orange High School in Orange Middle, I was always in the chorus. I used to sing, a t I was a tenor opera. So I knew, I learned how to throw my voice. I learned how to Take from the diaphragm inside uh, in, in, in our stomachs and breathe and take a big breathe. You know what I'm saying? When you perform. So you take a nice big breath when you perform and you have to like let your breathing be your guide and your tech and your tool into your technique when you're singing. So I was always like to sing. You know, I used to listen to Joe to see, Shy. I used to listen to uh, Keith Sweat, you know what I'm saying, R. Kelly. Uh, a lot of people don't like to say that anymore, but it's true. I used to listen to all these singers, and I used to be mesmerized. Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, you know what I'm saying? I used to just be mesmerized by their sound, and I used to be intrigued on how they could carry their tone and their, and their note. And that's something that I learned when I was doing, I, I took instrument uh, in, in middle school, and I also took ballet in high school for a short while, I think for two market periods. And when I took ballet, I didn't even know about Tupac Shakur. And a couple of years later, I found out that we had the same birthday. Uh, you know, our fathers left our lives at an early age. We were raised by our stepfathers. And then at the same token, we took art classes, acting classes, singing classes, chorus. I used to sing for a church in Elm, on Elm Street where um, uh, Fatal Hussein used to live in Montclair, New Jersey. Rest in peace, Fatal Hussein. Rest in peace, Afini Shakur. Rest in peace, Tupac Shakur. So, you know, it's, it's, you know rest in peace, Chadwick Bozeman, you know what I'm saying? Black Panther, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? I have so much um, uh, shout outs to give, it's endless, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, but so many things have happened for me and I feel so blessed and thankful.
Yes, um, I was I was um, booked to do that wedding last year, and the venue went through different places due to the COVID nineteen. We had to do it like out of state somewhere, and you know I went above and beyond as far as putting that outfit together because um, usually I do rent my outfits, but I had to buy it. And I didn't really have the money, but I, you know, God is good. God is so good. God is so good. He hooked it up. Um, I got the money and I got the, 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 the suit and you know what I'm saying? And it all paid off. It all paid off. You know, don't, don't listen to the lies about the, that I charge people 2000 a, a show that, that shit is absurd. I would never do that. Even if I was a, a bona fide, um, superstar celebrity, <laughs> as you like to think that I am, but I'm not, I'm a, just a regular Joe Schmo like all of you, but, um, how that and Chris, they, well, their wedding was magical, magical thing. God bless them both. Congratulations again. But, um, Caitlin hired me for Chris cause he's a big Tupac fan. And I just posted it. I didn't think nothing of it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't tell nobody about it. I just posted it. And then like in 24 hours, it went mega crazy. And I didn't expect all that shit to happen. And then what the funny thing is, uh, out of that, Snoop Dogg found another one of my other videos that I did with, with the Ryan show with Mr. Cheeks. And, and and Hampton Dave and, and Ryan uh, Vernus, Vernelli, I think that's how I spell it. And um, they had me on their show in Brooklyn and I was doing some skits of Tupac, some of his songs. And Snoop found it and he reposted it. Snoop, shout out to Snoop Dogg. All I know is that, that shit went viral. I did not expect that. And I mean... You know, I feel blessed, you know what I'm saying? I'm so thankful because it can open a lot of doors and windows once this COVID shit isn't over. I need this COVID-19 shit to be over so we could film, start filming again. I was even trying to get back on shows like I used to do. I used to work as an extra in New York City on shows like Law & Order SVU. I heard that they were going to start filming again, but I don't know how that's going to go over here in New York because I'm right over the Hudson River in Jersey City, so I'm ready to go. So right now, technically, I'm only working at the supermarket. And as far as a substitute teacher goes, we're doing remote learning until October, November. God willing, we'll get back into the classrooms. If not, you know, I'm going to have to just hold off and see what I could find. You know what I'm saying? But I'm hoping that I could just make money and start doing my films. You know what I'm saying? I got so many projects that I'm attached to that I just want to get them done. You know what I'm saying? I'm just praying to God that, you know, it all comes to fruitation. God word. God God willing, you know. Well, like I said, um uh the wedding was pre booked last year. And the way they set the the, the wedding ceremony thing up, it was beautiful. I mean, it was just a one big tent. You wouldn't even think it looked like we were indoors, but it was a one big tent. It was beautiful. Um, a big tent like the size of a building but um how that came about was uh this lady caitlin she said she was not gonna postpone and she had to get married she wanted to be his wife you know what i'm saying you know the time is short and i understand you know being married 14 years you know when you're in love and you really want to you know make it official and make it a, a, a sacrifice you know sacrificial relationship under the God, the eyes of Allah, God, you know what I'm saying? You got to understand that uh, this is something very important to some people. So the pandemic has slowed my business down because I can't fly anywhere. If I wanted to go to California, I would have to quarantine. And if I do go to California and I come back to New Jersey, I have to quarantine for 14 days and that's going to mess up my hours with me at the supermarket. And that's all I got for now. But I got a couple of weeks of vacation to use. So this, if, there's a, if there's a will, there's a way. But, you know, you got to do it safely. You got to wear a mask. You know, if I, I do, if I do have to fly back to L.A. Um, in the coming month, 
or two, I have to wear a mask. And, you know, I'm willing to do all that because I'm working on a project that I know you guys are going to love once you see it. I saw a prototype of it and it looks awesome. That project is with someone from the West Coast um, named Cam Shah, K-A-M-S-H-A-H, Cam Shah. And he's on Instagram. He's with Titans Music Group. And uh, in this uh, project, it's a movie, mini movie slash video. And I think you guys are going to be very well pleased. So well pleased that we're working on part two to con a continuation to the mu to the movie part with another song by Dub Raw. Dub Raw is an is one of Cam Shaw's um, rapper friends. They're both rappers, so um, and their 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 music and their, their 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 flow is out of this world. I'm telling you, you're gonna like this. It's a good sound, and um, Cam Shaw. Um, touches on a Punjabi rapper, you know, Desi rap, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, it should be released in India and Pakistan before it even gets to the U.S. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to hear it hit airwaves. There's a lot of interesting characters in that film. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to working with these gentlemen again in the coming month or two or three well, it's like again, everything is in God's hands right now, and that's why it has affected a lot of business for a lot of artists, actors, um, sports people, and musicians alike. Well, the other tribute artists all have the same love as I do that I believe for Tupac Shakur, but my love for Tupac is a lot different and unique because. I, like I said earlier in your interview, I've met, I've been blessed to meet Afini Shakur, his father, Bill Garland, his stepfather, Dr. Matulu Shakur, his sister, Setua Shakur, his brothers, Moprim and Tyrone Shakur. I've met his biggest fan, Kristen Parkis. I've met Leila Steinberg, his first manager, and I've also you um been involved with a lot of conversations on a telephone with his former and late may he rest in peace bodyguard uh Frank Alexander um and recently just recently it just keeps adding on i speak to Nancy Fletcher she was one of the singers on can't uh, can't see me his song can't see me um Snoop Dogg knows who i am I'm praying to God that Dr. Dre knows who I am by now. Maybe Eminem. But um, back to the people that I know, you know, it's like I'm I'm so blessed to have been able to speak face to face with these people. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've met a lot of celebrities along the way, but I'm talking about Pox family, about Pox family. You know what I'm saying? Today, August 31st is is um, Tupac Shakur's uncle's birthday, William Lee Saint, you know what I'm saying, Uncle Billy. And uh, shout out to Uncle Billy, happy birthday, Theo. I love you, Uncle. You know, and, and, and you know, we a family, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 they, they talk to me with respect, I talk to them with respect, I would never disrespect them or mean to cause them any harm as, uh, as respect to Aunt Glow, who's in charge of the, um, you know, of the estate, you know, and they know what I do. They know that what I do is for the love, is for the heart. And like I said, I give my clients Walmart prices. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't buy this shit. You could buy this shit. It's crazy. So when I'm performing, what makes me different is when I'm performing, I go into a trance and a lot of people don't understand that. Like I pray, I'm nervous. My hands are sweaty. I don't know what type of people I have in front of me. I don't know anyone like that. So when people treat me with kindness and respect and they show interest in what I do, it makes me feel more comfortable. It makes me come out my shell. But when I do go in, in the beginning, I'm praying to God. I'm asking God to take control, to, to let my body be a vessel and let his music flow through me, 
you know, give these people what they paid to see. And I, I go through a trance and I, you know, I breathe and, you know, it's a lot of prayer, man. It's a lot of prayer. But I tell you, it's, it's so much fun. But the day after, it's like you were working out. Like, like the next day, like I'm like burnt out. Like my body hurts. It's like I told you, I work so much. Well, about 30, 30 hours a week. But I don't have time to go to the gym. Plus, the gyms are closed. But that's no excuse. You can always exercise and stretch. But I haven't been doing none of that, you see. And I've just been... You know, so this is like probably the last booking I have of the year because I've been seeing a lot of inquiries from my fans. But again, due to the COVID-19, no one can actually book because no one can actually have any parties or have any venues where they can make money off of, you know, getting me over to their to their shows or something like that. So a lot of things is on hold and it's understandable. You know what I'm saying? God always provides, you know what I'm saying? For every dark night, there's always a brighter day. So you got to remember that. You got to always keep your prayers, you know. Tupac was a revolutionist. He was the son of a Black Panther. Black Panthers have a long history in the United States government that you and a lot of the young youth need to do your research on. Tupac's uh, upbringing was surrounded by uh, uh, black liberal rights movements, his uncles, his surroundings, the people he lived with. If you saw the movie, there's a part in the film where they say that Tupac wasn't trying to follow the dashiki looking motherfuckers wearing the African garments back in the days because he felt like the government and the corrupt police were taking advantage of the black and brown. Do you understand? The same shit that he was describing 25 years ago is the same shit that Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X was describing. And we still here 45, 50 years later, we still fucking here. Fighting the same fucking shit. Arguing with people every day. Over the same shit. That's what makes Tupac different. Because the way he is mine, his, his upbringing, the, the, the shit that he garnered all those years. The shit that he saw. Think about his life. Think about the, the uncles. Think about the, the surroundings. Think about the... The teachers he had in his life going from state to state, staying in one state for five years and going to another state, going from state to state. I know how that is. You understand what I'm saying? Like Tupac, we just didn't have that father figure until our stepfather stepped into our lives. But Dr. Matulu Shakur was always uh, uh, going, you know, going against the grain for the black people, for people of color, black people. Panthers, you have to do your research. You must do your homework. But in the classrooms, they took this out. So it's up to you to use your Google and all your technology today to go back in time and see and read what they're about. And if you can uh, compare it, we're going through the same shit in 2020. I, I don't like when people say that I capitalize off of Tupac. I never capitalized off of Tupac. I kept his memory going, his legacy going. I don't capitalize off of him. I've been doing this for 30 years. If my son is 25 years old and my, and I've been doing this before my son was born. So I've been doing this for 30 years. If you, if you want to ask me how long I look like Tupac, sure. Capitalizing, no. I don't capitalize off of another man's life. I see his life as a movement, as a, 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 as a positive inspiration, and as a positive influence for the people surrounding my areas. From Newark, New Jersey to L.A., from Jersey City to Philly, from Philly to Chicago, from Chi-Town back to South Carolina, back to Alabama to Georgia. 
52 states plus the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, shit, Mexico, <coughs> uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. I want to say a shout out to Napoleon out there, man. He, he made a good move going out there. God bless him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Mutabil, you know what I'm saying? Allah Akbar, man, you know what I'm saying? God bless you, man. Inshallah, God willing, we will meet. We will meet each other in the future soon. Um, but you got to understand, Tupac is worldwide. So I don't capitalize. I like to just say that I am a tribute artist. I keep his spirit alive. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the money to me. Um, no, dude, you right. You good. You good. I love your questions. No problem. I, I just, I'm just being honest. I, 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 I'm no, no disrespect taken, and I'm not upset with you. I just, I feel like the word capitalizes. Like I'm trying to live off of him, and I really want you to include this in this interview. There's no way in hell that I could ever live off another man's life. And if the estate and if Aunt Glow and if Kristen Parker and everyone who else is involved and Uncle Bill Hussein and everybody gave me the chance to do my part and we can make this even better, I, I, I would be all in. You understand? 100%. Um, I just do it to keep his spirit alive. And again, I just love to make people happy. I just love to make people smile. And I enjoy doing it because I love singing his music. That's all. It's nothing, it's nothing bad. You good on your half. I love your questions, though. Honestly, honestly speaking, as far as the social media buzz, it hasn't helped out my career in any way. Um, it hasn't propelled me anyway because I'm still doing the same projects I was doing. No one, no one, no one asked me to, um, to, um, no one asked me to do any projects as of lately due to any of this newfound um, internet buzz. Well, you know, being a Puerto Rican, born and raised in Newark, New Jersey, um, my mother was poor. Uh, my stepfather wasn't in the picture yet. So my mother raised me and my little brother, Matthew. And we went from Newark on South Orange Ave and Sunset to 16th Ave in South Orange uh, Ave, all in Newark. Then we moved to Philadelphia. We were living in Center City. And then we moved back to Irvington. And then from Irvington, we went to Orange. And then from Orange, we went to to, to, to Jersey City. And the, the thing what it is, is like I said, going from state to state, we went to Puerto Rico one time, you know what I'm saying? Going state to state, house to house, running from uh, 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 an abusive um, father. I, I didn't see him abusive, but my mom's was going through abuse. So my mom raised me, you understand? Like Pac's mom raised him and his sister. My mom's raised me, you understand? And she showed me how to, how to, you know, stay off the street. And she was always on telling me to read and do what I got to do in school and don't be another dumb Puerto Rican and make something of yourself and always believe in your dreams and stuff like that. And I love you, mom. Shout out to you, Margaret Pena. I love you. God bless you, mom. I love you. Uh, she's my angel, my spirit, you know what I'm saying? Everything in, my, in life. But living place to place, it was always hard to keep good friends that, you know what I'm saying? So it's always moving away, you know what I'm saying? So we never had a, a spot that we stayed because we was always going from place to place. And that's something that a young mother tends to do when she has, you know, no type of direction. And she's young as well. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I like Tupac's music, because even in his music, he touched on these subjects. Now, like I try to tell people, um, your, your, your surroundings, your environment makes up to who you are. And if you don't like your environment, you don't like your surroundings, then you have to learn how to be different from those that live and occupy that, that environment. So you have to learn how to break free. And I, I kind of learned that and so when people write negative comments about me, I've been dealing with negative all my life. I'm dark skinned. I'm not too black to be black, but I'm dark skinned. So the white people see me as black. 
then the black people see me as a, a dark tone Puerto Rican over here on the East Coast, all right? Because we have a lot of Puerto Ricans. But I've always dealt with racism, you know what I'm saying? And on all levels, in, in the workplace, you know what I'm saying? In, in the, in, I'm a high school dropout. I went back to school, got my GED, damn it. Then I went to a, a community college, then I went to a university. I have a bachelor's of science in biology, you understand? And I should be doing other things. I have a student loan that I'm trying to pay. And it's hard when you're not working, you understand? So if I ever gotten a chance to do a movie deal, the first thing I want to do is pay off my student loan so I could be debt free and I could give more to my family and leave something to my family if I die. But like I tell my kids right now, if I should die, God forbid, I'm leaving you the same thing my daddy left me. A prayer, a prayer, and a prayer. I love you, son, and that's it. That's all my daddy left me when he left at 56. You know what I'm saying? Of lung cancer. So it's so many things that a lot of people don't understand, you know what I'm saying, that goes behind the scenes. It's not just what you see because we don't post the bad days. We only post our successes and our fun days. And I was surprised that that went viral. And I, again, I want to say thank you to everybody who made it viral. I want to say thank you to all the hate. To all my supporters and all that other good shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit. But regardless, I'm going to keep doing what I do. Even if I'm a broke nigga in the street. You know what I'm saying? Walking down the block. You're going to hear me singing. You know what I'm saying? It was my mama who raised me. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking down the street, minding my business, rapping Tupac. That's all I do. You know, I've been doing it for so long. I'm like that little owl that sings in the street in the, in, in the little Bugs Bunny cartoon. You know that owl that sings, I like to sing her. I like to sing her my song up in the river. I'm like the song her. I don't know if you ever seen that shit. It's like an owl, an old Bugs Bunny Looney Tune. But you know, it, it is what it is, man. I just like to have fun. Uh, being a tribute artist, I don't think it could be a pass. I don't think anything is a passive income. I don't think anything is in is set in stone. Even teachers are having a hard time right now. I'm a substitute teacher, and I, I knew it for years that there would come a day where teachers might be obsolete. I mean, we'll have holographic teachers, or we'll have teachers on television like they're going to do in Mexico. And I think that's what they should do over here in the U.S. too, because not everybody, everybody could have a laptop, but not everybody has internet connection. So I think they have to bring back Sesame Street. I think they have to bring back those type of channels. Because that's what they're doing over there in Mexico, I was told. Out in, um, you know, in the rural countries, they only got TV. So for the students to learn, the little boys and girls to learn, they're just going to put t uh, music on uh, school on television. So they're going to have like one, one hour of math and then another hour of history. And you have to be creative. We live in 2020. So right now... Nothing is set in stone, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to tell everybody to stay safe, you know what I'm saying? Drink your drink your tea. Stay hydrated, you know what I'm saying? Watch your surroundings. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Because, honestly, we all got to stay safe, man. Like, we, nobody wants to get the cooties, you know what I'm saying? Nobody wants the cooties. And it just sucks. I, I was telling some young man earlier today, I was like, man, how old are you? He was like 21. I was like, man, how, how is it dating today? He said, what dating? You can't even date anymore because you don't know who, who to talk to. Everybody's wearing a mask. We all look like Cobra Commander's um, soldiers running around. We all look like Cobra Commander soldiers. It's crazy. When I met Afini Shakur in 2010, it was on my birthday and it was on Tupac's birthday um, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Stone Mountain. And my wife, Mary had purchased me tickets to go to Georgia to visit um, the Tupac Shakur Foundation, uh, the Tupac Shakur Amaru Foundation out in Stone Mountain. And there was a big uh, concert out there. The Outlaws was there, Mike Epps was there, and Rick Ross was there, and everybody was performing. And I met Afini. I went to give her a newspaper with all the information about me trying to go for the Tupac film at the time. The bodyguards let me through and then she walked up to me. I walked up to her and we just started hugging each other. 
it started drizzling on us, and raining. It was a beautiful feeling, it was a beautiful day. My wife was right beside me. She met um, Afini Shakur and we spoke and she told me, wow, she said, you really look like my son. And then next thing you know, uh, it was it was a beautiful moment, man. It was very spiritual, you know what I'm saying? But she showed me a lot of love and she basically was telling me about the film. She was telling me how, you know, that she sees me doing the film, but not that film because she had lost the rights to that film and she was no longer a part of that film. She told me, be wary of that film. Just keep in mind, there will be another film the family's going to put out. And I was like, okay. And she was like, and you, I could truly see you doing other films being portraying my son she was like just please when you do portray him portray him in a positive light you know give to the community remember the good things about him she's like and please tell the people that my son is gone you know please tell them that my son is gone he lives on through his music and his his art and his poetry and his movies and his inspiration to others. Meeting Afina Shakur was a magical moment for me because prior to meeting her, I had met uh, Bill Garland, Tupac Shakur's biological father. Shout out to Uncle Bill Garland. I love you, Uncle Bill. Um, and when I met Afini, I had showed him the picture of me and Uncle Bill and his daughter. And Afini, right away, she just started crying. She's like, oh my God. She's like, wow. She said that his daughter looks like uh, his wife at the time, Mary. And it was, I believe she had passed away. And she, she, I remember her name because she shares the same name as my wife. So it was, it was a beautiful moment, I'm telling you. Afini was a very down-to-earth woman. And I regret not getting more time with her, not getting a chance to do the movie the way she wanted it to be done, you know? And it's just, I don't know. It was a spiritual moment for me. It'll always live on in me, with me. And then when I do see Bill Garland, you know what I'm saying? I, when I see him, it's like family. It's like looking at my uncle. That's why I call these people Uncle Bill Garland, Uncle Billy Lusane, Uncle Dr. Matulu Shakur, you know what I'm saying? These people are my family. You know, so that's what makes me different from everybody else. And that's, you know, as far as the, the, the haters go, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You can't please everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just don't look at the content. That's what I tell the motherfucker. Just don't watch it. You don't like it? Change the content. It's funny you say that because not too long ago, I was in an airport and I ran into Sheamus, the WWE wrestler. And he was going through the airport, and so was I. We was trying to catch our gates. And next thing you know, he's like, oh, shit, man, Tupac. He was working, he was walking with somebody. This dude is humongous. And I started cracking up, y'all. I was like, oh, shit, look at Seamus. Yeah, but I met tons of people. I met Waka Flocka. I met um, so many different people. I met Gucci Mane. I've met... Um, so many different people along the way. Um, Charlie Murphy, rest in peace. I always say Charlie Murphy because he, he always left uh, a positive influence on my life. And he always told me about Hollywood and how the music and movie industry really is. Not to always believe the glitz and glamours of what you see because people don't really live those type of lives every day. There's not a party every day. There's no parties every day, you know? Everyday life has to go on, you know? I wanna say it's just a generation. It's just, you know, like being a, a teacher of working in an urban setting, in an urban city, like Jersey City for the past 15 years. You know, I've seen people I've seen generation of rappers come up. I've seen a Nicki Minaj. I've seen people go crazy for Nicki Minaj. Now they bash her and they don't want to hear about her. And they love Cardi B. 
And to me, it's like the flavor of the month or the flavor of the year, you know. Not, I'm not saying that about Cardi B and, you know, Nicki Minaj because they're on another level. But some of these newer acts, you know, it's like they're going to be replaced next year by something new. You know, by a new generation of children, by a new generation of fans. Like I like to tell my students, how would you feel that in the future you're working at a job and you're working with Nicki Minaj? Or you're working for Nicki Minaj? Like J-Lo, look at J-Lo. She's buying, she's trying to buy, you know, the, the, the New York Mets. Everybody's trying to move up in life, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's an evolution, that's what it is. So I don't think the new acts are gonna die out. I just think their fans will carry them on for years to come. That's how basically how it works. So all the people who like X Extension, you know what I'm saying? All the people who like um, the new rappers, I think they're gonna follow these rappers as they grow. They will always remember their albums, always recite their lyrics, and always just stay on top of their game for that for that artist that they love, whether they be dead or alive. You know what I'm saying? Your artist is your artist. Whoever you love, you're gonna love. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Beatles, like Elvis Presley. And it, and, and I see it like every time I go to... Up, What's up, man? All right, all right. Every, every time I go to Las Vegas, I see it. You know what I'm saying? There's people who love um, uh, the, the comedians. You see that Eddie Griffin, he be out there in, in, in Las Vegas. So the young bucks don't really know who Eddie Griffin is. The older bucks do know who Eddie Griffin is. So there's a lot of things like that. I think if Tupac Shakur was still alive, he would be in politics. I think Tupac Shakur would be more of a candidate for a political run. Something like my man Do It All from Nork is doing from the Lords of the Underground, do it all. Uh, and I was, I wanted to retract. You said, you know, I wanted to add some people like do it all, Tretch from Naughty by Nature. These are Tupac's best friends. These are Pac's best friends. And I've gotten a chance to meet and discuss uh, what I love to do and why I do what I do with his friends at special events like Sandy in 2012 when we had that big major catastrophe over here when we had that bad catastrophe over here in Newark and New York and New Jersey and you know so many down the shores and we did like a, a raising of the funds for the money for the people of New Jersey you understand nonprofits and stuff so that's how I got to meet the leaders like Tretch and the Lord of the Undergrounds, Do It All. And Do It All is doing his political run for Newark and Essex County. And people like that, you know, we need people like that. People who are like trying to come up. People like Shaq, who are from Newark, you know what I'm saying? Who come back and give back to their communities, you know? Thank you, man. I, I want to say thank you and uh, it was my pleasure to help you and thank you for helping me get my story across to the nation, to your listeners, to my listeners, to my haters, to your haters, to our supporters. You know what I'm saying? No matter what the comments are, no matter how racist things are, you always got to pray for better days. You always got to hit people back with the positive. Hit people back with your mind. Fight with your mind. That's what Tupac wanted us to do. Read, read. Become intelligent. Become intellectually intelligent. Read, make your children read. You understand? If they have the tablet, if they have the phone, if they have books, material, read. The power of words, the power of literacy. So much more pow powerful than what people give credit to, you understand? They don't give the credit to the lyrics, to the vocabulary. And that's what makes a lyricist. That's what makes a good musician. The, if, they're, if, if they're using lyrics, they have to use their words 
to empower the people, to make the people believe, to make the people feel your words. That's the job of an artist. That's the job of a singer or a songwriter or a rapper. That is what quality means. And when people put that into their music and you align that with the pu that, that, that perfect tempo, you know, it's crazy, man. I want to give a shout out to everybody who's listening. God bless you. Thank you for giving me a chance to touch your ears with my words. And thank you so much. I want to give a big shout out to 71 Pac. Follow my man at 71 Pac on Instagram. And follow your boy Thug Angel 12 on Instagram. And if you're on the Twitter, I'm on Thug Angel 11. And if you have to do some type of party and you need me to be there, I'm found. I, you can find me at gigsalad.com. G-I-G-S-A-L-A-D.com. Tupac Shakur Tribute Artist, Worldwide Mob Figure. God bless you all. Stay safe. Wear your mask. I want to give a big shout out to Hustle Simmons because Hustle Simmons was there in Brooklyn the night of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he's the main reason that him and Tupac's biggest fan, Kristen Parkis, had brought me out to Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. And my man, Hustle Simmons, Chris, shout out to Chris, Hustle Simmons out in the VA, down South Carolina, all, the, all Georgia and shit. Shout out to my nigga. God bless him, bro. I want to also give a big shout out to Biggie Smalls. I want to give a big shout out to Biggie Smalls and respect to Mrs. Wallace as well. Because um, I have met Gravy, the actor who played Biggie Smalls. And him and his manager showed me nothing but kind respect. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to them as well. I want to say thank you to everyone I've met that I didn't mention along the way. There's so many beautiful people that I've met, amazing people. Um, I want to say thank you to Jennifer Corbett. Again, Kristen Parkis. I have so many people on my mind, flowing through my head over the years. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. God bless each and every one because we don't know how long we have on this earth. And, you know, again, rest in peace to Chad Bozeman, Black Panther. You hit me with a passion, trying to get me stuck in the mix. I'm staying strong, got no time for the tricks. Now they want to hear if I'm going to jail. I'm living swell, cut my life on the street. I live in hell, and I can't sleep. They got my phone tapped. And mercy of the Lord, come get me for they hurt me. Ran out of tears, and through the years, couldn't change me. My daddy left me alone, and so I made bread.